Hey everybody, in today's video I am going to be modeling for you the Upper Die Center for Activity 4.8F. So uh, if you could make sure that you go to the activity page and then click on the document for Activity 4.8 and then go down to number 6 which is the Upper Die Center and if you look at the directions you will notice that you are going to be again using the Revolve tool. So that means we are going to be drawing an axis line and then drawing a profile and then revolving that profile around the axis 360 degrees. The other thing that is new to this exercise is that we are going to be adding a hole to it, and specifically a tapped hole. So if you notice on the drawing here, there are a couple hole features uh, that we've discussed earlier uh, in this exercise. Right here, there is a counterbore hole. Here's the counterbore symbol, and this uh, dimension here tells us that we have a tapped hole. So I'll be modeling both of those for you. So let's go ahead to Onshape and get set up. So the first thing we want to do is hit create and select document and then we're going to call this upper die center underscore your last name. Okay. Once that loads you will notice you, again as usual we get our top front and right side default work planes and in just a minute we will be determining which work plane we want to use but let's go ahead and look at the shape first and look at some of the dimensions that we're going to need to know so looking more closely at this uh, we notice that the axis line will actually go through the middle in this direction here and then we're going to draw a profile above it now if you notice we have another section view. That means a cutout of our whole part. And in, more specifically, this is what we would call a half section view. Even though it's a quarter of the part, we call that a half section view. And again, we know it's solid because of these hatch marks lines, these little angled lines here. So we're gonna be using the dimensions to help us to accurately get all of our lines parallel to our axis line and then the width lines as necessary. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we are going to want to draw our axis line. And in this exercise, we will use the right side work plane. So let's go ahead and get started. So since we're going to use the right side, we are going to hide the top and the front. And we're going to start our sketch and select the right side. And notice sketch one goes on our right side. And then we're going to change our view to the right side view. So I'll zoom out a little bit. And then what we are going to do is we're going to draw our axis line horizontally through our origin point. So I'm going to select line. I'm going to select construction. Please make sure they're both selected at the same time. Then I'm going to come down to our figure and I'm just going to draw a horizontal axis line or construction line through our origin point. And again, I'm not worried about the length of the line because again, we're just going to use that as a line of reference. So when we revolve it, uh, we have something to revolve around, and then we'll also use it as a line of reference for our measurements when we add our diameters and radius values. All right, so let's go back and look at our figure to understand what we are going to draw next. So again, since we're drawing a profile, what I'm going to do is I'm going to free draw this shape here using the line tool. And again, in the, initially, I'm not going to worry about the dimensions. We'll be adding the dimensions as we go, and then it will size itself correctly. So let's go ahead and just kind of free draw this shape here to get a profile, and then we'll add in the dimensions. So as I mentioned, we're going to select the line tool, and then I'm just going to free draw that shape. Okay. Okay, now that I've drawn the profile, notice when I clicked on the last point, the interior turned a darker gray. That means I know I have a good solid profile. There's no gaps in between those endpoints. And so now I'll be ready to dimension our figure. Okay, so I'm gonna right click and escape line just to turn off the line tool for now. Now I'm ready to start adding some dimensions in. So let's see which dimension we want first. So we always start with the lines that are parallel to our axis line. And those lines are going to be represented by the diameters that we can see in our figure. 
So there are several diameters that we can see uh, that are represented with the circle with the slash. So let's start more towards the middle. Notice here, this is a counter bore hole feature. Okay, this is telling us that this is a hole and they want us to use the whole feature to do it. So, but in this case, we're going to do it by drawing the profile as we did and then dimension it. So this is a 0.25 through uh, with a counter bore of 0.4375 and a depth of 0.3125. So those two dimensions is what we're going to start with first. And now those, those actually represent the first two lines that are parallel to our axis lines, the lines that are closest to our axis lines. So that first line is going to be 0.5, but because it's a diameter and we've only drawn half of the figure, that means we're going to have to take this diameter and cut it in half. And that's what we will do for all of our diameter measurements is cut them in half. So I'm going to go ahead and start there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it half 0.25. So let's do that first. So now let's go ahead and select the dimension tool. Let's select the bottom edge of our figure and then our axis line. When I drag to the right, we get a dimension and then we're going to type in 0.25 divided by 2 enter okay so when it did that when obviously we can see it shrunk up our figure pretty pretty much so now we're going to kind of zoom in a little bit and what you might also want to do is uh, if the dimensions way out over here is just kind of turn off the dimension tool and then grab that dimension will make it easier so it's not so far away from the figure It'll eventually resize itself once we have all the dimensions in. The next parallel line is this edge here, and that is represented by the 0.4375. So now we're going to dimension that line 0.4375 slash 2. Okay, and again, that slash 2 is allowing Onshape to do that measurement for us. So it cuts it in half and made it 0.219. Okay, now the next parallel line is this edge here. So we actually have two more that are parallel and they should also be represented by diameters on our figure. So where are they? Notice here we have a diameter here of 2.0625, a diameter here of 2.1875, and a diameter here of 2.1875. These two 2.1875s are the same. They're pointing to the same edge. So they're representing the same measurement. And so when we look at our figure, the first edge that we're going to dimension is the smaller one, and that is this edge here, which is the same as this edge here, and then we're going to do the 2.1875, so let's do this. So we're going to dimension this edge to our axis line, drag to the right, 2.0625 divided by 2, enter. Okay, now, when it, I did that, notice it, it moved that edge way above, right? And now our other edge is here. So here's how you fix that. So what I'm going to do is turn off dimension just for a second. I'm going to go to our next edge that we're about to dimension and just kind of grab it and move it up just temporarily. And then now I can dimension it. And if I need to resume, okay, so now axis line to the top edge. And 2.1875 divided by enter. Okay. Now I have about the right dimension. So let's make sure. Yes, 2.1875. Okay, so now I have all of my edges that are parallel to our figure are now dimensioned accurately. So now we have to start doing the width dimensions. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so now what are our width dimensions? So the depth of the Counterbore is 0.3125. So that's, that's going to be from this edge to this interior edge. So we can go ahead and start with that. So we're going to dimension from this edge to this edge. Okay, 0.3125. Enter. And in this case, we are not. Uh, cutting these dimensions out all the width dimensions okay or really in this case the depth dimensions are are going to be the exact same we are only cutting in half the diameter dimensions all right so now let's see what's next so now we're going to have uh the outside edge to here is 0.3125 and then 
the outside edge to here is 0.75. And if you notice and look a little bit closer, see this part here is representing this corner here, this angled part of the profile that we drew. And this is what we call a detail view. When anytime you see a part that's smaller on the, on the figure and then larger in your drawing, that means that it's a detail view. It's, it's kind of blowing it up so we can see it a little more clearly. So we'll go ahead and dimension those two. So that's a height of 0.156 for that corner and then a width of 0.125. So instead of doing an angle, they did it what's called a point-to-point -point dimension. So let's go ahead and do that. So a height of 156 and a width of 125. So point-to-point. -point. So that's a width of 0.125. Enter. And then a height of 156. Okay. Now we have the right dimension there. And then the next dimension again is from the outer point here to that point there is 0 0.3125. So let's do that one. This point, this point, this point, and this point is 0.3125. And then the outer point here to this edge here. Is going to be 0.75. Okay, so now we should have the correct dimensions and we should have the correct shape. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the dimension tool, and what I'm going to do is just move these dimensions a little bit, just so they're a little more clear, so you guys can see them. And that way you can match them up a little bit better if necessary. Okay, so now hopefully you can see that a little bit more clearly, and hopefully match it up to your dimensions as you go about dimensioning your part. Okay, now, now we're ready to, those are all the dimensions, so now we're really ready to revolve our part, and then we will add our hole, our tapped hole, to the back of the figure. So let's go ahead and finish our sketch. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and select isometric view. And remember, we did it to the right side, so it's angling a little bit differently. And so now we're going to select the revolve tool. We're going to select our figure, and then we're, the revolve axis oh, bar turns red, so we're going to click on that, and then we're going to select our axis, which is our dashed line. And there is our figure, and we're going to go ahead and select the green checkbox. Okay. Now, because we don't need the right anymore, we're going to go ahead and hide that. And then once we do that and hit isometric view, it'll resize it on our screen a little bit better. Now. We do need to add a hole to the back side, okay? So this is currently the front, and then we're gonna add it to the back, because if you notice, the counterbore hole is on the front side, and then this hole is pointed to the opposite side or the back side of the figure. So we're gonna have to rotate our view around to create a sketch on that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go up to our view cube first, and we're gonna rotate it to the back side. Okay, so notice when I rotated it, I just clicked on the corner. So now I can see the back side. So I'm going to click on a sketch. I'm going to choose the surface, okay, of the back of our figure. And I'm going to click right there. So now that adds add sketch two to the back side. So now I'm going to change my view of my view cube to back. So I'm looking at it a little more uh, easily so I can uh, add my point here. So instead of drawing a line or a circle to represent the hole, what I'm going to do and what we are going to do is add what's called a hole feature. So what's easier to do is once we create the sketch, instead of drawing a circle, what we're going to do is use the point tool. So point tool is just to the left of the A text button. It's a little point here. So now I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to go to my center point and draw that uh, point above my center point. Not all the way up top here, okay? But notice I get that green, or that, I'm sorry, that gold dotted line. That means I'm lined up with the center, okay? And then I'm going to put my point in. Now, how did I know it was lined up to the center? So if I go back to my figure, again, we have another kind of pulled out section here uh, showing us the back side, and it's showing us a distance from the center point to the new hole that we're going to create is 0.5. So now that's how I know it's lined up with the center. 
And so now I'll dimension from our center point to the point we just created and make sure that's 0.5. Enter. Okay. And then that's all we're going to add on the sketch. So we're going to go ahead and hit the green checkbox. And now we're ready to add our hole. So now I'm going to go back to isometric view. When I do that, it rotates back to the front side. So I'm going to click on it one more time to the back view. And now I'm going to use the hole feature. So hole feature is down our toolbar. And it's this icon right here. Okay, it's kind of like a little cube where it looks like a little hole in the middle of it. So we're going to click on that. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to select simple. So you have a couple different choices. You have simple, counterboard, countersink. In this case, it's a simple hole. It has a depth to it. So that means it's blind. Okay, so let's look at our drawing here. So we notice it says 8 32 UNC with a depth of 5. So I know it's blind because it has a depth to it. Okay, it would say through if it went all the way through the part. And plus, I can see in the image here that it doesn't go all the way through. Okay, 8 and 32 is the size of the hole, and this is the threads per inch. The 32 represents the thread per, per inch. And I know it's inches because it says UNC, unified national, and C is whether the hole is coarse or fine. Okay, those threads are coarse or fine. So now when I go to add my hole feature, we use ANSI standards. We'll change it from custom to ANSI. And remember, it's a tapped hole. We said that in the directions, so we're going to make sure it says tapped. It might, it might default to clearance, so just change it to tapped. We're going to look at the size, and there's different sizes, so you want to make sure you select number 8. And then 32 is the next option for threads per inch. And then we're going to leave the percentage of the diametric engagement as is. And the only thing we else we have to change, if it's not already there, is change our depth. And this is the depth. You can see that to 0.5. OK, so type that in. And then once you have that, then you're going to click on the hole, the point that we added. That will add the hole. And then we're going to hit the green check mark. Now, in Onshape, one thing that I like to point out is if we zoom in, notice there's no actual threads here. You can't see a visual representation of the threads in the actual figure that we've drawn here and created. That, those threads will be represented when we do the uh, multi-view 3D drawing of the figure. Okay, So those don't show up on the actual image, but they will be on the drawing when it's time to do that, and we'll be doing drawings later on. So now, now that I know the hole is there, I'm going to go ahead and hit isometric view. And that's my figure. That is the upper die center. If you have any questions, please let me know.